Welcome, good evening. Uh, this is the East Line Board of Education meeting for November 22nd, 2021. I'll call the meeting to order and please rise, please rise and join yourself and John Finance and the public pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Public comment. Everyone want to address the board concerning any matter. Not seeing any. I know it's online, right? Okay. Okay. So uh, we have the some minutes to be approved. The uh, meeting minutes for November eighth uh, are included. Would you like to make a motion on those? I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes, please. Okay. Anybody want a second? It? Second. Okay. Kate seconds it. Any adjustments, modifications, those minutes? Everybody okay? All those favored motions signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody right. opposed? Anybody abstain? Okay. We're all set with that. Uh, special reports. Uh, let's see, we've got Mark Salerno here. I'm here. Slackman, representative. Sure, so uh, real quick, uh, tree lighting is this Friday. Uh, Saturday is the holiday stroll. Please come on down, Sport Main Street. Um, light parade is uh, scheduled for December 11th. And uh, on December 1st, uh, there'll be a town meeting. Um, there'll be a, a vote on uh, well five reconstruction. We're looking to redrill a well five, which is not producing up to its capability. Um, we have uh, 30K for 90 Main Street, and that's money so we can get a, a Yale Shred type study done for downtown and including Flanders. Last time we did this was over 30 years ago. Um, and that's kind of lays out what we could do for downtown and, and improvements we could do to try to improve investor and access and marketing the town better. Um, town clerk 60K to digitize records. So we have a whole bunch of land records that are down there, and it requires people to come down to the town hall. To literally get them out. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'd like to digitize them. Um, this is all COVID relief money, and that in particular will allow people to access that without having to uh, go into the town hall. So um, that is Summer Trust, and that's all I have. Great. Any Mike, questions Mike, from Mark? Twelve one. Yes. Yep. Okay. Mark, I'm wondering in some of the meetings that are not uh, hybrid. We have our meetings here at Board of Ed hybrid, and why why don't we do that, or can we do that? Uh, well, we did approve uh, some money to allow for hybrid. We didn't have the technology um, up front, but uh, we did uh, approve uh, money uh, recently with the COVID funds. So that is a possibility coming forward when that works complete. Is that a priority, if I could ask? Uh, I, I can't speak for the next administration. In your opinion? Yeah. It probably will be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah. Um, I, see, I see we have our state representative here. Holly, did, did you wish to say, I, give, say I, I see there's another item on the agenda that's okay. coming forward, but I would like to just give a, a little update if I may. Sure. Sure, do you want me to? Holly, she's, yeah, so you, you're close to the mic. Okay, yes. And I see we're going to recognize the party board members, and I'm going to jump the gun a bit here. Uh, I felt I would be very remiss if I did not attend tonight to thank, in particular, you, Dr. Hagen, um, for your years of service to the Board of Education in East Line. Your incredible dedication, your truly um, nonpartisan support of the best interests of our students our faculty and our administration has not gone unnoticed. And thank you so much for your service. And I want to thank John Kleinhans as well. It must have been pretty cool as a graduate of East Line School System to be serving on the Board of Education. So I want to thank you both because as all of you know, serving on the Board of Education is truly is um, a labor of love. And the hours you spend, not only in these meetings, but in all the other meetings, to benefit the children and families in East Line. And that is huge. So I want to thank you. Um, just on another note, uh, I see Stonington is having a meeting on December 8th. 
um, addressing the issue of mass, which I'm not going to talk about, but really instituting test and stay in Connecticut. Um, you know, uh, with the issues of quarantining, although we now have screening and stay, that's not the optimum solution. Massachusetts implemented test and stay back in September. We have been pushing for that to be an option here. I believe the governor did a press conference last week with a company in Connecticut called Detect, who has, has a rapid test. And the more of these they sell, the cheaper the, uh, the cost will be. And I think there is nothing more important than keeping our children in school safely. So we have a um, $250 million of available ARPA funds that are out there. There is also a $500 million surplus in this year's budget. And I will certainly be advocating for those funds to be sent to our school systems because we need to keep kids in school safely and test and stay would allow that. So, and that's my update. Uh, the session will start on February 9th. It's the short session um, when we'll be looking at fixing the things that we may have not gotten perfectly done last year. But I think continuing the healthy recovery and with this group, keeping your children, your staff safely in school to help make up for the things that they've suffered is has to be a top priority. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ali. You said a five hundred million dollars surplus. Ali? Yes. Wow. Holy. Wow. 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 Just done a one eighty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, we did use a billion and a half of federal funds to fill holes in this year's election, but even with that, there's a surplus. Wow. Wow. Okay. wow. Right. Others. Okay. So no we have a student representative time. here. Man Man yeah. 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 Um, Good evening. I just have a few updates from the high school. Uh, the first thing is that the juniors and the seniors are still continuing the leaf fundraiser for their respective classes. And the second thing is that we had a few activities on November 11th to thank and remember our veterans. Uh, there was a school play named Puffs November 12th through the 14th. Uh, there's a powder puff game tomorrow with the juniors versus the seniors. And there's also a Thanksgiving football game the 25th against Waterford. Um, winter sports are starting up soon, around the week of the 29th, and uh, there was a student walkout recently addressing some of the current events at the school, and the last thing I want to say is happy Thanksgiving to all of you, and I hope you guys enjoy the holiday with your loved ones. Thank you, too. Very nice. Very nice. As well. Any questions for our student representative today? No? Okay. Well, thank you very much, thank and you. happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's oh let's move on to the next uh, agenda topic here. Yeah, well, and this is a uh, this is a hard one. Um, and I, I want to just thank Holly for being here again uh, tonight, Holly Cheeson and Kevin Siri, our soon to be uh, first select, and thank you for for joining us on behalf of Tim and uh, and John. Um, why don't we start with the. Uh, with John, I've got a few words. I just want to <laughs> for John. Only a few. <laughs> Only a few. Uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll switch over to uh, to Tim. Um, and then, if anybody else, obviously from the board wants to chime in as well, uh, you know, please, uh, please, it's an opportunity for us to, to do that. So, John, um, and I, I've, I've written both down because I think it's uh, these are important to the degree that uh, you know we we so appreciate uh, you know the time and effort that you have put in. I want to thank you, John, you know, for your years of service on the Yale Board of Education. Uh, your knowledge, your skill, and your keen insight have been most helpful and appreciated as we partner through the great work that has occurred across our district. Simply stated, you care about kids and have a true love and respect for the Eastland Public Schools. Your assistance in tracking state and legislative agendas, issues, topics, and you know, bringing them back to our board and, and to me uh, has just been so appreciated and uh, extremely helpful. Uh, you will be truly missed. Um, it's been an absolute honor for me uh, in having the opportunity to work during this time on the board. And um, I hope we remain close and in contact. And uh, John's going to be heading down to another another town, looks like, as well, and doing some work. And uh, we're going to miss you. And hopefully you'll be, uh, you'll be back on this board someday or back in, in our town. So, John, thank you so much. I appreciate everything you've done. Thank you. 
if any of our board members had something they wanted to share a few thanks of john or no, i just i'll just say a couple a couple of words one was it's a, it's a lot of fun uh having being on board with uh, with John and also Lee because uh, they're both uh, graduate graduated from Eastside High School with my youngest daughter, Bryn. Um, and uh, just it's just kind of a neat, neat, neat thing to have happen. Um, just so many different ways to see that see that actually occur. The other thing is is that John has always uh, always provided a big high level perspective politically uh, in terms of having a good sense of what's happening up in Hartford. And uh, we won't miss that. Um, yeah, I, I was going to say that as well. <laughs> we're going to miss having that fly in the wall up at the Capitol. Yeah. Uh, and, and kind of, and, yeah, and chiming in at the right time when uh, there's kind of some, some perspective that's needed as to where we're, where we're going and headed. So I, thank you very much, John. Anybody else? Send you off with a little heart, Jen. <laughs> right. So this is Mark's last name too. Mark. Right. Right. Mark. If you were to, if you could, you would. I know. <laughs> Did she ask if Alexander was taking your place? Yeah, yeah he would. Yeah, he would if he could. <laughs> That's good. He's got the. He's got the butt. Yes. Already. Yes. Real quick. Uh, Really appreciate it. I mean, it's been <clears throat> Lee and I have been on it for six years now, and we've got four more. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it was it's growing from twenty five to thirty two with all of you, and kind of losing more hair and figuring it all out. <laughs> uh, it's really cool, and especially bringing it back to Eastline. I mean, we moved here when I was fifteen years old. Didn't know a single soul at all, and to then get elected to the board of education. And you know now we have Mrs. Kelly as the principal of the high school, which was one of the coolest things that I did as a board member uh, to to not put your name in the nomination to be our high school principal. I, I think you know it's it, it means a lot right now, and I know in 20, 30, 40 years this experience will mean a whole lot. You know, so mm -hmm. thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. We hope you keep in touch. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So thank you. Still sell the beach house. That's all good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Hagen, um, you know, Tim, we've uh, we've known each other, uh, you and I, for seven years now, um, and spent countless hours talking on the phone or uh, meeting together at Central Office. I cannot begin to express my appreciation and my admiration for you and all you have done for me and these sign public schools for so many years. I consider myself the luckiest superintendent in the state because of the stability that you have provided to our Board of Education as chair for so many years. You've always been one who focuses on people first. You're a true listener, a true partner in the work, and one of the most compassionate and caring individuals that I've had the pleasure of working with. You love this district that has shined bright through the countless hours that you have given up over the years. If we calculated the rough number of board meetings, you know I had to do this. But <laughs> you have attended since 2003. That's scary. It equates out to approximately 430 meetings, regular meetings, over your span of time on the board, the span of time on the board. And again, that's just regular meetings. I'm not talking about you know uh, special meetings, school project meetings, budget meetings, town meetings. That number, well, <laughs> well, yes, well over, uh, well over a thousand. Um, and you know, you can't fathom the number of hours that equates out to that you have given up uh, to this this board in this uh, this school district in this town. That time, that commitment, that dedication—it's uh, just something to marvel. And you've given so much to our schools and our community, and we can't thank you enough for that. On a personal note. Your, your continued support and trust in the work that we have engaged in over the years is something that I will never forget and hold dear to my heart. You've been a voice of a reason and a solid foundation for me, our admin team, and all of our staff. This was especially true as we navigated the building projects and redistricting together. And it's continued with COVID, and other issues we've endured over the years. <laughs> wow. That was a sad word. You are the quintessential board member in every way, Tim. 
And uh, I could not have asked for a better partner and more importantly, friend in the work. You will be missed by all. And please know that our school district here in East Lyme is a better place because of you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, it was very, very nice words and uh, very heartfelt. And I know I, I, was, I know all this all the time we've spent together. Um, and uh, it's 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 kind of it's kind of sad, but on the other hand, I think it's you know it's a it's a it's a good time, and uh, I think I think everything is going to be moving right along, and and things will be good in, in coming along. So I just hope that I've been able to set an example in some ways as to how you know boards should should function and work and my mentor is sitting out here in the uh in the uh audience um kevin siri um who was basically the person that spent a lot of time i spent a lot of time watching him and, and mary broderick um on previous boards and uh learned so much for from them as to how to run things and then the institutional knowledge that we tapped in for several years for a long time from Kevin and, and Mary too um, was invaluable in helping to guide the district. So it's really, really nice. It's nice to see you here. Did you did you want to say something, Kevin? Uh, I, I'll be brief, but I really promise I will be. Stop and shop on Sunday morning together. Yeah, I saw it. Uh, stop and shop and uh, Tim, you, you still got a little bit longer to go to catch up to Mary though. She had 22 years. I know. So you got to come back for at least one more turn. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, take, 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 take that challenge off. Huh? <laughs> you know, I, I got to serve for eight years with Tim for my 14 years on the board. And Tim was such a great sounding board to go to. You knew that he would always think things out thoroughly and would come up with a very good answer that took into consideration everyone's point of view. So um, we appreciate, all of us appreciated your sound advice and your uh, stewardship over those several years. And yeah, um, I was trying to think, uh, I, I think we appointed you to fill a vacancy. And yes. It was probably one of the smartest things we ever did. That put you on the board. Because obviously the district and every student and faculty member has benefit from it. So thank you for keeping and helping maintain and make it even a better school district, Tim. So thank you for what you've done and thank you to Mary Ellen and your family for sharing. Yep. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Speaking of speaking of which, um, she's the one that's most worried because now I'm not Thanks so much. Thanks, Kevin. Wonderful. Well, wonderful. Can I just? Sure. I'm going to miss sitting next to you. For, I've sat next to you for 14 years. I know. Yep. I, I'm going to miss my buddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we've been through a lot. I remember, I mean, mm -hmm. first time we campaigned together, you were carrying your, your son, who's now in college. Well, I was carrying uh, Ainsley in a backpack. Uh, on your back. She was mm -hmm. like nine months old, walking yeah. around town in my backpack. Pretty amazing how much, how much time there is. And, and all the different people we've gotten, I've gotten to know. Um, Amy's been always right, right there as well. It's been wonderful, and every every board has been great to work with and has had ups and downs. But they, we all, it always seems to work out. I don't, you know, how it, how it all kind of comes together. But uh, and each board is unique um, because ten ten individuals are never the never the same. Uh, so it's good. So I want to thank everybody for. Um, nodding their heads and, and, and <laughs> hopefully uh, agree. Thank you very much. Okay. Sure, Jeff. First of all, I think one of the things that's made you such an excellent board chair is your roots from the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> I see them every day in, in, in your language and the way in the way some of your actions and your attitudes, and I think that's what has made part of you that's made you a strong board, made you a strong board chair. Mm -hmm. But I think how supportive you have been to everyone, even in times of crisis, and have always elicited, taken the time 
to elicit everyone's response. That is amazing. And that's a hard task. But you've done it with such grace and such beauty. You will be uh, a hard, a hard show to follow. So again, uh, you will be missed. And I appreciate everything you've done for the board and everything you've ever done for Jeff to make him a success in his job. Not that he didn't do it on his own, yeah. but also for making us all board members. And I appreciate that individually for myself. Thank you. Thank, thank, thanks, Jill. Thank you very much. Good. Okay. All right. Ready? We're live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're, we're ready. Okay, we're ready. We're ready. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see, we got a few uh, uh, discussion action items for the evening. Um, first, oh, first one is uh, discussion action on the facility naming aquatic center. So, yes. Um, so, uh, two, was two meetings, three meetings ago, actually, we um, had uh, formulated a, uh, we, we brought forward to the board the request to look at the uh, renaming of the, uh, the pool um, in the aquatic center. And uh, we formulated a committee. Um, and since that time, uh, our committee uh, has uh, decided on uh, naming uh, the, the pool, the assigned pool. And um, we want to jump right into the motion. Uh, Jane, yeah, so the motion. We thought I have we the, motion. Share the motion. Um, Bob was on our committee. Uh, Mark Powers, Rich, I'll never remember Rich's last name. Williams, Rich Williams. Williams, Holly Buckley, and Nikki Hahn. Is this you? Yeah. So um, we had a nice committee. committee. So I'm actually gonna make the motion. So whereas Tim Hagen has dedicated the past 18 years to improving the quality of education for a generation of students in East Lyme, and whereas Tim Hagen has been a tireless advocate for promoting the education of our students, for promoting education, educating the whole child to ensure that they become productive and contributing members of the community, be it resolved that the East Lyme Board of Education in recognition of Tim Higgins' outstanding achievements while serving as a member of the Board of East Lyme, as a member of the East Lyme Board of Education from 2003 to 2021, the East Lyme Aquatic and Fitness Center from 1999, hereby names the facility currently known as the East Lyme Pool in the East Lyme Aquatic and Fitness Center as the Tim Hagen Pool on this 22nd day of November 2021. Oh you have a second. <laughs> oh, great. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a matter. I didn't realize this was going to happen. So I'll oh, start this out here. So, <laughs> hey, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, it's even a good secret here. Right? So, uh, so with that, uh, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? You would want to abstain. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll say it. Well, that's, I, well, wow, that's, that's, I'm really shocked. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised. Um, You're speechless. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think we should look at improvements for the. Yes. <laughs> I've aged since so, 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 so the second started to bad, and a pool of age, too. But um, uh, that was the thing that got me uh, started. Uh, with the Board of Education. That was Mary Broderick came to me. Well, I went to Mary and said, I really support. There was uh, an individual, Bob Albright, that said, I think we ought to have a pool. And I went to Mary and I said, you know, I think I think that's an excellent, that excellent idea. And Mary said, Well, if you if I will, I will help with that uh, initiative if you take a uh, co-leadership uh, role. On what was called the post NESDAQ committee, which was a committee that looked at what to do with our middle school and our overcrowded elementary schools. And that committee, with Roy Johnson um, oh co chair, we uh, came up with a recommendation. Uh, with uh, that committee had, I think, like 30 people on it. We came up with an analysis and a recommendation that we should build a new middle school and we should move the fifth graders to the middle school to depressurize the three elementary schools at that time. And uh, that that was the beginning of the whole the, for me getting involved in all sorts of all sorts of things. So it had to do with the, it was a, it was Mary Mary that what blame it on Bob blame it on Bob yeah and then uh, and then uh, yeah that's right that's right. And uh, and 
and Mary was so was so uh, so helpful uh, during those those times. So, so wow, that's very nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. The, the committee decided the uh, above the uh, interior doors of the um, the aquatic center. Uh, it will say the Tim Hagen pool, honoring Tim's exceptional community service. Um, and the signs are in, in the works, yeah. so they're they're not done yet. Uh, I should say the sign and a plaque. In addition to the sign, there's going to be a plaque, and the plaque will read Timothy Tim Hagen, in recognition of Tim's leadership and community service, advocacy for building the East Line Pool, dedication to promoting youth and adult swimming, and commitment to outstanding schools as a Board of Education member from 2003 to 2021, and as the Board of Education Chair from 2011 to 2021. And I, I will add that your family just gave up and put it all in this. Oh, yes, okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. And in January, the signs will be done by um, hopefully early January. We're we're planning a full ceremony oh, for, okay. at the pool uh, for the the dedication and uh, you know friendly Great. family Great. Right there. Oh, and wow. Our powers and Rich and mm -hmm. Rob, thank you too for all your efforts and sneaking meetings into the pool <laughs> and, uh, and we're able to, to get those done as well. So. We appreciate it. Wow. Sounds okay. great. Well, I'm flabbergasted. So <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it'll sink in. But. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Holly and so, Kevin. Thank you, Holly. Thank, thank you. And we thought because our agenda was shorter this evening, too, um, we have some, some cake and some fruit, too. Um, so we'd wrap up our, our meeting once we're done and then we can have a little reception after if you want to take a walk over the pool too you're welcome to as well sure. show where these items are going to be so I just wanted to put that out okay okay good uh the next item which is uh uh it's marked for discussion and action and i'll preempt it by saying that it's going to be just for discussion um is the aquatic center's uh roof and uh, the ffo uh committee met uh this this afternoon with the architect uh, from uh, uh, the, the, pr put the proposal together. Uh, and I'm, Jeff, do you want to say or, or turn over to Eric here? Yeah, let's turn over to Eric as the FFO chair. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> we're they may, they on a standstill sort of thing. Yeah, we met, we went to the pool, looked at the facility, got a good look. Bill was um, critical to this uh, review, if you remember, in the previous discussion. Um, and I think where we got to is we're asking for a little more information and potentially other options uh, that we're going to bring back to the FFO and then bring it to the board. So we've made progress. We've looked at things and there's no great answer. So there's no easy or solution. Um, so I don't know if you have actually, you, you have some. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, I mean, to. To sum up, after going over there, you realize that you're dealing with the structural member is attached to the roof through the insulation. So you've got compressible material between the structural member and the roof, and and um, there's a lot of unknowns on on the project, in my opinion, on the project. And and to solve it, I think we need to dig a little bit deeper and and also look at the option you know what what other options are out there because it's um uh the the comment from the architect was that it's likely that the purlins the structural members that go between the big arches um were not properly treated for a pool environment to begin with so they weren't um coated properly um so therefore Putting a coating or cleaning them up and putting the right coating over a partially rusted thing. Uh, it's it's not a good, there's no it's good, gonna, yeah. yeah, there's no good yeah. fixes, I think. So, okay. so we're to come in January. Yeah, more. yeah, yeah Chris and I are going to work yeah. uh, together, Chris gonna, um, and work with uh, Justin from Tecton, who is with us at FFL, and uh, have a, a quote for. As well, so we can compare. Let's see where we're at. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was very good. It was um, a very helpful. Uh, Bill's suggestion of our previous meeting to look a little bit closer at this was a was a really good, really good suggestion. And, uh, 
I think I think you are gonna be able to kind of put the put some additional options together to figure out the what we certainly don't want the roof blowing off the Tim Hagen. Uh, okay, any, any questions for uh, Lee? Yeah. Yeah, Speaking of the roof blowing off, I mean, how long do we have to kind of reach a decision and start working on this before it becomes? I don't, I didn't get the feeling that it was going to happen. It's not imminent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's still, there's more about the stuff falling in the pool. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. 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 We have a little bit of time to like yeah. dig in and make sure that we're tackling this the appropriate way. It's not like I think they said the soon as we'd start anything, if we did, would be the summer. Gotcha. Um, so there's okay. nothing that's going to happen. That's helpful. Okay. So we'll, we'll keep working out with Chris and Rob and see where it, uh, where it lands us by January. Okay. So we got one more item for discussion, the DEI school subcommittee uh, continued work. Yeah, I really just wanted to follow up on uh, you know the high school. I know I was keeping you in all in the loop uh, as we were working through you know some uh, some challenges last uh, week. Uh, I want to commend um, Deb Kelly and the high school admin team and and you know the support that they put in the students um, and uh, you know supporting you know the walk up that, that they did. And now it's it's the the next steps, and that's where you know Deb's at with uh, with high school administration and her staff. Um, and their next DEI uh, subcommittee meeting is next Tuesday, and then we're going to have ours actually right after that. That's one of the reasons we moved. We're supposed to have one tomorrow, but right before Thanksgiving was tough, so I pushed out an email today. We're going to move it to next Tuesday, so we can have some follow up discussion on on some of their work and, and efforts, um, and really working on you know. Uh, Avoiding that that bias uh, component that uh, you know is, continues to kind of trickle into you know our uh, our work and Deb, I know there's a separate group that the kids maybe you can just talk about that for a minute some of the work that the students are doing and putting together sure. as well on a side note. So uh, going back now a few weeks, um, yeah, a number of students come to us individually to share some of their thoughts and concerns. So we kind of pull all of those kids together, and then after the walkout, added more kids to it. And they're working on um, an assembly, a student-run assembly in January. But basically, we'll give kids an opportunity to share their experiences um, and on how racism has affected them. And it's going to have, there's kind of three components to it. They're going to talk to the faculty. They're going to talk to the whole building. We're going to do it one grade level at a time. And they're also, there's also going to be an advisory follow-up. So they're working most of it Julia and Henry to um, to put this together. They did working on it. It's gotten a little bit bigger, which actually is kind of exciting. Um, and it kind of also aligns with some of the other things we've been doing with some of our faculty, uh, our own professional development around not just um, issues of racism, but also transgenderism and some of the other um, areas where there are microaggressions happening around the building. Uh, but this group of, of students is really kind of taking the Whole lot of ones, and they have some really great ideas. Uh, so we're kind of letting them lead the way as much as possible. Uh, this is definitely going to be the catalyst for uh, you know that continued work, and uh, yeah, it, it's going to be, uh, especially in the, the students involvement in those discussions and conversations. Candace. Yes, so um, I've been following along on this one, not just starting last week, but really since the day uh, the kids started coming back to school. You're, you hear a tremendous amount and you see a tremendous amount when you're in the school and or a parent of a child in the school, right? Um, and you see things that some people may not get to see. And it, this has been percolating and bubbling. Um, and I do wanna commend our administration for the things that you are doing um, because I know that you are working very hard, you and your team. I think that not just our district, but every district, <laughs> every state, this is national, um, is having these challenges as well, um, along with social media, along with you know, pandemic on top of so many different challenges. Um, we've talked often 
whether or not it be at CABE, whether it not be with other parents, that when this is a time that no one has ever taught in before, parented in before, lived as a student or a child before, it is very, very, very challenging. So I do commend you for the, not just the work that you've been doing, but the constant, active listening and providing a platform for students to be who they are, to speak their truth. Um, I was not here for the entire um, event, but I did come over to see. And um, I thought that it was just absolutely very, very moving just as a parent and as a community member. Um, and as someone that I guess people call an ally, uh, but to do the right thing always, right? I had said a couple of weeks ago to Jeff, how can we support our administration, our people and our buildings more? You know, what is it that we can do more of? And believe it or not, the peer model came up. And I've said this before, um, through the years when we've had different incidents, that that is the most effective because when it's the same idea as a parent, right? I get all the time, oh my God, are you gonna lecture me again, right? <laughs> and I'm just trying to talk to her or talk to him. It's a lecture, that's how they see it. And you're not getting anywhere. They don't hear you, but they do hear someone that looks like them, someone that is on their level. So that peer model, I think speaks volumes. And that's why I think that it was so effective what this group did uh, and really how powerful it was. It really sent uh, waves through through our community. So um, those are just the things that I really wanted to say. We've been talking about the coalition a little bit too about some more peer opportunities for uh, peer mediation, peer counseling, and stuff too. But I think that would really love for us to, to move in that direction about some of our kids. Good. Good. Very sounds pretty good. No, no obvious. No other comments. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. All right. I have a question. Go ahead. Sure. So I've been wondering. You said that the the group grew. Like, where was it originally, and what did it go to? I, I don't know the exact numbers, but well, it started part. out as a group of probably about ten uh -huh. yeah. that came forward individually, and then after the walkout, after our assembly. Yeah, more kids come forward and say that they, they wanted to be part of it. So yeah. it's um, it, you know, it's kind of doubled, I guess. Okay. I mean, not everybody's available for every single meeting. They met on Thursday last week afterwards to kind of group and, and talk about you know next steps and with the uh, added interest in it, you know, what that could grow to be. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Nice. Will they be identified as ambassadors then? And People helping to mitigate problems and um, well, and we talked about two possibly. We have a lot of ideas out there. One mm -hmm. of them is to help get more training for some of them to to help with some of that too. Right now, they're telling their story, mm -hmm. um, but then that would be kind of the next step after that. Nice. nice. I know the school I went to, high school I went to, there were kids who were identified as blue ribbons and those were the people who were kind of yeah. the, the leaders and didn't do the videotaping, but would actually step in and stop the bullying. So that was really a, a nice thing. We, we have a lot of student groups that are, that volunteer their time to help. And I'd like to kind of take it, you know, step by step and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah. Practices as well, I think is something uh, in addition that you know we need to continue you know to focus on. So there's more if an incident happens, which you know we're, we're probably going to see more incidents happen. I think it's it's unfortunately that that's where we're at. But trying to engage in conversations more between you know the parties involved uh, is another focus uh, focus area. And Esteban Garcia, um, who's on our district wide committee. Mm -hmm. He sent me a um, bias response protocol that they're actually working on at Southern. 
it's got some really good information in it, so we're going to bring it up at the next um, our district wide committee meeting uh, next week. So maybe something along those lines uh, too, you know, more of a protocol that, that we can put in place. I just wanted to add one quick thing: um, is that if if we can try to model some of the things that we are doing at the high school, at the middle school, I think that it would be very beneficial. Um, I am. I, I just think that that might be really, really wise, right? Instead of waiting until children get into the high school, I mean, part of really changing or setting a new tone, at least that's how I view it, I mean, you know, um, should be coming from a younger ages, right? Um, and then brought through. So I just think that it might be very beneficial. Okay, good. So I just want to add on this, oh, yeah. Emily. So what you're doing is, um, just really um, part and parcel of what we established in the uh, strategy that uh, um, back in April, you know, to bring in with the goal of uh, developing students' capacity to foster uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And also the way you're doing it is in accord with the, the rationale, the theoretical construct for that uh, strategy was uh, social cognition and social learning theory, because you're basically embedding uh, the process of meeting making right in the discussion to the kids. So it's an excellent um, application of the strategy that we uh, put in force back in April. So commend you on that. Sure. Excellent. Lee? I was really just more of a clarifying question. My understanding is that the group is kind of assembled in response to what has happened. Is the plan for this group to kind of stay as a student group to kind of be proactive in the, the yeah. yeah, so some of those kids are involved in the group that we had already started, and others of them have now joined. Okay. So I don't know if they'll stay together as a group. I think some of the students that spoke were part of the planning, and others, like, they get kids that apply to, uh, to, um, to speak, so it was kind of an eclectic group of kids with a variety of different messages. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think those that want to can, uh, and I've met with a couple of them since then to talk about some of their thoughts about um, other issues in the school too. The family opens a lot of doors. Awesome. Okay. We hope to bring some, like to bring some committee members too, to yeah. the board meeting so you can hear directly from, from them. That served us well in previous committees. You know, we heard from the pathways, we heard from coaching. It's just mm -hmm. as important. Absolutely. So to bring some committee members uh, into our, our future meetings. There's some discussion and dialogue mm -hmm. as well. So plan on that uh, occurring. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Well, that concludes the, the discussion aspects for the evening. Administration reports. Jeff, anything to add? Um, just that we're no weekly update this week as you know we've got a, a shorter week. Um, I want to thank uh, Michael, uh, my uh, as well as that Patrick, Patrick Conway uh, joined us as well uh, to help out. Uh, he's, they're covered for Grant uh, mm -hmm. tonight. This Grant's out, so thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate uh, <laughs> what you, you being with us. Um, what gentlemen, what year are you? Both juniors. That's right. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> John, John knows the that 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 John was an AB guy at a lot of board of ed meetings. It's great to have some students helping us out and they're doing a fabulous job. So and Patrick, you did great in pops last oh, weekend. Thank you. <laughs> I was yes, going to say, first one to speak at the walkout did yeah. a phenomenal job. Thank you. So, well, well done. Okay. So many thanks to both of you and just a happy Thanksgiving to everybody yes. as well. Yeah. So, thank you. Excellent. And uh, let's see, what Emily said, see, no, she's not here. Yeah, and nope. and Marianne, anything to, to add? No, nope, just all the budget's in on Friday from the department. So we're yeah. Good, good. Okay. Committee reports, the FFO uh, met, and I think you basically heard the whole, yeah, the whole meeting. So, yeah. <laughs> um, the full roof, but we will remain standing. Um, so that brings us to future agenda items and board comments. Um, I know this is the last time this board will be meeting. So uh, um, 
I think you guys have been, been fantastic, been great. We've had some really tough times the last two years to, yeah, to deal with hard. some really difficult times. Um, I think y'all did very well. And I think we've I think we've actually made some I think some progress was made. I think Barry was always it gave a pretty good speech of, oh, it was about a maybe nine months ago or so where he said he said just sit back and think about all the good things that have been accomplished during the COVID situation. And he was right. Uh, and it actually triggered having some conversations and presentations by the principals um, in the district. And there was a lot of energy and enthusiasm. So it really kind of, kind of turned it. So I, I thought that was, a, was kind of a neat, uh, a neat thing to, 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 to always remember, even though know, things don't look as great as they you wish they would be, there's, there's always some really good things that are happening. So. Anybody else? Any other? I, I just want to make another comment, Tim, to, to thank you for I personally. I, I've heard a tremendous amount working with you. Um, I also think that in a world where integrity and character uh, are not always present, um, the students that get to see these board meetings get to see what it's like with someone who does have integrity. Uh, who is an excellent listener um, and knows how to get the best out of his team work. Um, and, and I think that's a great thing because um, they need more role models that are folks of character. Thank you very much. Well said. Well said. Well said. Well said. Okay. Good. So with that. So. I would love to make a motion. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Kate. Well, I just wanted to say I really appreciate getting the Viking Saga. I know it's available online. The hard copy is really nice. I take it to my daughter's house after I read it. And <laughs> since she was one of the editors, That's when right. she was a student here, yeah. she really loves it and is really proud of it. She did not get a job at the New York Times, you all know. So I think that's inspirational for the kids around the Viking Saga. So that's pretty cool. And, um, you know, Jeff, I can just, Jeff Beal, uh, this Jeff does a good job. I think Jeff Beal also does a really oh, yeah. amazing job. And uh, shout out to him for the work that he does. I keep bringing hard copies. Yes, so, yes. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's way this, easier to read than a hard copy. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I really better. appreciate it. Yeah. 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 No, no problem. Nope. Uh, Jack, Jackie always pulls that pile together from in the depths of the so I will. Yeah. Not here. Yeah. 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 Uh, all in favor of joining us. Aye. 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 Aye.